All right, Matt, next fight on our UFC 253 main card, a fight that I'm really looking forward to, a women's bantamweight. We've got Ketlin Vieira taking on Sajara Eubanks. And Matt, all of a sudden, Sajara Eubanks, with a few really tidy wins, has inserted herself at the top of this division. She's really pining for a title shot. And I mean, who can really stop her at this point? I mean, Arena Aldana is going to have something to say. So is Holly Holm, and so is Ketlin Vieira. Matt, we can break this fight down in a whole bunch of different ways. But Sajara Eubanks, we talk about it every time she's out. She most likely, if she made weight in the finale of The Ultimate Fighter, probably would have won the inaugural women's flyweight yeah. title. I mean, yeah, maybe Nico Montano would have won, but Eubanks was obviously in that fight. The weight cut wasn't going well. Roxanne Montefiore took the fight, and that was pretty much history. And I know there was a point where Eubanks at 25, she was on all the big MMA shows, kind of really stating her case that she deserved a shot at the belt. Didn't happen for her. Weight cutting issues continued. She moved up to 35 and had a few pretty disappointing performances. And I say that just from the standpoint that they were losses. Now, the fight against Aspen Lad, it was a loss, but I don't think it was all that disappointing. The fight against Betch Cohea, oh boy, that's not that great. But all of a sudden, with a few really tidy wins, including the one against Julia Vila a couple of weeks ago, I mean, she looked amazing in that one. All three judges scored at 29-27 something that you don't often see. Now, opposite her, you've got Ketlin Vieira, who we haven't seen in a number of months. She's been out for about nine months since her first pro loss, that one against Irene Aldana. And I'll let you kind of touch on that one in a second because it was a bit of a surprise. Vieira was obviously quite emotional after that fight. She was putting on a decent fight. She's putting on an exciting fight. Both women really going at it. You had Vieira pushing the pace, throwing... I wouldn't call them hooks, and I'm going to get into that a little later on, but throwing with a lot of power, really biting down on her mouthpiece, which was kind of a tell that Joe Rogan was going after as a bit of a commentary. Now, was it Habib shouldn't be striking against Ali Quinta Joe Rogan? No, it wasn't. It wasn't that critical, but he was actually pointing out something that did ultimately become a difference maker for Aldana. And I mean, before that, undefeated 10 and uh, and all at the time. And you look at the fights that she had. So she went from Kelly Fasholtz, who it was a split decision win. Then she beats Ashley Evan Smith, really good fight. Then she beat uh, Sarah McMahon and then Kat Zingano by split decision. In that split decision to Kat Zingano, I went and checked it out on MMA decisions. All 17 media members had scored at four. Uh, Ketlin Vieira, there were five of them that scored at 29-28. Uh, there was quite a few that scored at 30, 27. There were even a couple that scored at 30, 26 for Vieta, if you can believe it. So split decisions aren't all created equal. Sometimes a judge just takes a round off, goes for a little bit of a snooze. So overall, really interesting fight. I'm going to let you kind of touch on that loss that Vieta had in her last time out. And maybe we got to give some shine to Sajara Eubanks. I say maybe we definitely do because that fight against Julia Vila, I know she was an underdog in that one. We had kind of seen it for Vila based on her striking and her jiu-jitsu. And I mean, ultimately, Sajara Eubanks pretty well nullified that with her wrestling. Oh, yeah. Eubanks looked phenomenal. And with both these women, they kind of have the same problem. And it's at their best, they look like they could be potential title challengers. But then at their worst on the other side, they're like, ooh, do they even really belong in the top 10? Because you had mentioned with Sajara Eubanks, like, the Aspen Lad loss, even if you want to call it a loss, I get it was, but I think it was just such a great fight against another really highly ranked fighter that, yes, you might have lost on your record, but the fight was really good. You put on a great performance, moving up in a weight class against one of the bigger 135ers, so I thought the future was really bright for Eubanks at 135, and then the Betch Cohea fight happens, and yeah, that face is really the best way to sum it up. I mean, she got tired, she kind of faded as the fight went on, but in her last two fights, I mean, Especially the Julia Vila one, we had kind of counted her out. Avila, the much bigger fighter, someone who, not that they had a lot of hype behind them, but someone who you could see kind of potentially moving up those ranks a little bit. And Sajara Eubanks really solved a lot of those early problems that I thought she would have had going into that fight. She didn't have that massive uh, kind of adrenaline dump and cardio fade as the fight went on. And if Sajara Eubanks can kind of keep her skill set throughout three hard rounds, she's going to be able to move forward in this division quite well. Because when you look at what she does, she's a pretty good boxer. She has good hand speed. She's very physically strong for the division, even though she comes in as slightly smaller than a lot of her opponents. But with Kellen Vieira, this is someone who, if she had won that Arena Aldana fight, she'd probably be fighting for a title. I mean, that was kind of the conversation moving into that fight was, okay, let's say she goes out there, chokes out Aldana. It's, okay, perfect. Kellen Vieira is our next uh, number one contender. Amanda Nunez, go for it. But she loses that fight, and it just really shuffled the whole division up because now Holly Holm may or may not be back in the title conversation for the 17th time, I guess. And we don't really know who is going to be that next solidified number one contender at 135. So if Kellen Vieira can get this fight done let's say she can get it to the ground because 
Eubanks on the feet is going to have an advantage, but for Eubanks to really be at her best on the feet, she has to mix in her wrestling. But if she takes down Ketlin Vieira, you're really just playing into Vieira's game because Vieira on the ground, pretty much second to none right now at that 135 division. Which is really interesting. And this is where, you know, you might think that this fight is a little bit of a clash of styles because Vieira, you know how good her jiu-jitsu is, but also her boxing is quite crisp. She has kind of a little bit of a long stance, a little flat-footed, but she throws with quite a bit of power. If you look over at her striking numbers, and it's a limited sample size, it is for kind of both fighters. But if you look at Vieira in particular, she only has the five UFC fights. It's a negative striking differential, 2.74 to 3.82. And that's not really what you want to see, especially with an accuracy of 30. 35%. It's not great. It's not the worst. Um, opposite her for Sajara Eubanks, positive numbers, 4.71 to 3.14, and a bitter, uh, a better accuracy and better defense. So I would agree with you there. They strike in different ways. Um, you typically see Sajara Eubanks really stringing together a lot of combinations, really getting in tight and pushing the pace. Vieta can kind of do it from distance a little bit more. She is the longer fighter. She's going to have a little bit in terms of reach and a quite a bit in terms of height. The other thing, though, and this is what a lot of people are probably going to point to, so we're not unique here, is the fact that you know how good of a wrestler Sajara Eubanks is, but in her back pocket, she has that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, and she's really been able to hone in on a lot of the good qualities of her game. Not that there's really many bad ones. I mean, you look at her record, and it's not the best, but she definitely is you know, bantamweight caliber um, type of fighter at the highest level. So you know how good her jiu-jitsu can be. You know how good her wrestling is. You saw it against Julia Vila and she didn't get submitted in that fight. So kudos to her. On the flip side, though, people might not talk about it, but Caitlin Vieira is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. She's a judo black belt. She's a Brazilian national wrestling champion. So I'm not privy to how good the wrestling is in women's bantamweight terms, in terms of like what we have in Brazil. But I can tell you that if you go look at Ketlin Vieira and her entire body of work, the fight against Evan Smith, the fight against Zangano, and most specifically the fight against Sarah McMahon, Ketlin Vieira has a 92% takedown defense, which is great. Zangano tried to take her down, couldn't do it. Ashley Evan Smith tried to do it. And uh, Sarah McMahon's the only one that was able to do it. I think she went one of five out of all of her takedowns. Now, that one was in the first round. She got uh, Vieta down and stayed on top of her for the majority of the round. At the end of it, Vieta went for a little bit of a toe hold, if you could call it that. And Joe Rogan said something. Again, I got to give him shine in that fight, too. He said, um, Sarah McMahon looks pretty lost right now. Like, she looked totally fish out of water in that fight, which is something that, Matt, like, we talk about it, and we're going to bring it up in the next fight. I know we will, but the Louis Smolka effect. And Sarah McMahon is a prime fighter like that. So in the second round, McMahon goes in to clinch up with Vieta, Vieta switches position and throws McMahon down to the ground. She's on top, and I swear to you, Sarah McMahon, look, total deer in the headlights. And from there, yeah. Vieta goes in for the head and arm. Or that's at least what she was going for. Um, Joe Rogan says, you know, she's kind of in the wrong spot for that. It's not really going to work out for her. You know, gets in the arm triangle, and it's it's lights out, or it's the end of the fight. So, Ketlin Vieta, big win there. And like you had said, too, she was a second-ranked win women's bantamweight when she fought um, Irene Aldana. Holy smokes. Like, that's crazy to think. And now we're here at a point where Ketlin Vieta is about a minus 175 favorite. You've got Sajara Eubanks at a plus 155 underdog. And out of 953 total votes on Tapology, 78% going Vieta, 81% predicting she wins by decision. Are you a fan of the odds? Because I have to lay my cards on the table. I'm fine with them. I think they make sense. The layoffs, though, that's the thing. Because for Ketlin Vieta, her last win over Katz and Gano was two and a half years ago. Exactly. And it, it's hard to justify being a minus 170 when your biggest win was almost two, well over two years ago. But you look at what she does well. And because the Jar Eubanks' game plan should play right into Vieira's skill set. Because, if, again... If Eubanks takes her down, or if she's able, even able to take her down or going for the takedown, we know the reversals of Vieira are really good. Those hip throws, those different changes of direction. And if she can get on top of Eubanks really any period during this fight, it's going to be the biggest advantage that either person could have. So I don't know if I'd bet on this one just because Eubanks, I would say, is a fairly live dog. But uh, <laughs> I do think Calavira should be able to get it done. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, you know, we talk quite a bit about Ketlin Vieta, but for Sajara Eubanks, like I said, the switch and the camp in New Jersey with Mark Henry's, that's perfect for your game. And I'm thinking of some of the fighters, the two main that come off the top of my head, your two time PFL champ and Lance Palmer and your former UFC lightweight champ in Frankie Edgar. Those are two pretty good people to at least have in the same gym to kind of learn from, especially in the lower weight classes. So Jerry Eubanks definitely has a chance in this fight. I'm going to side though with Ketlin Vieta. I think it's one of those fights where if she can really string together the uh, the striking, you know that she's a Nova Unyao fighter. She's going to have Pedernaris in her corner. I think it's going to work out in her favor. This is a really high level fight at women's band and weight, Matt. We're both going with, yikes, Julia Vila. No, I'm just kidding. We're both going with Ketlin Vieta to get the win in this one. Make sure you keep locked in with Fight Night Picks. We got an extended look at our main and co-main for the titles. Adesanya taking on Costa, as well as Jan Blahovic taking on a really tough out and Dominic Reyes. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, Matt. And as we always say, let's get into it.